Hey YouTube, Do It Yourself Junkie 369 here, and today is day 72 of the RV10 build. Um, getting back out here after a break and just all kinds of stuff going wrong. I had my uh, water heater over there kind of sprung a leak on me, and that caused all sorts of problems and time issues. And then uh, just seems like some days I, I'm too tired after work to even think about coming out here and doing a video. Um, which, so in the future, I might be doing some work that I don't video just because I don't always feel like being on camera. But I'll, I'll try my best to uh, always videotape for you. So we are still working on the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, stuff's starting to come together now. Uh, we're on page 10 of section eight. Still on step two, I had to wait for some rivets to come in. They have, so I'll be finishing that up and then progressing on from there. First thing is I uh, aired up some of my car tires because the weather, the temp has dropped. So the pressure inside the tires dropped enough that I had to add some air. So I need to remember to turn my air compressor down Otherwise, who knows what will happen. I have it turned up to about 90 PSI. One thing to remember on this double offset is turn the pressure up a little bit. Uh, for some reason it doesn't seem to drive as quickly as a straight. And then uh, don't forget to turn the tank back down when you put your, or turn the uh, pressure back down when you put the straight set on there. One thing I like about these rivets I ordered from Vans is they wrote the size on the plastic bag. Um, I really don't need this part here because it's obviously a universal head versus a countersink head. But the 4-5 is really useful instead of referring to the parts list and finding what bag number corresponds to a certain rivet size, I'm just going to write in Sharpie on there what each one is. I might also stick a uh, tag inside the bag because then if this wears off at least I still have a reference in there that I can just read. And I like that better than um, the previous method I was doing where I'd look at the inventory list, find the rivet size I need, find what bag number it is, and then go search for the bag number through all the uh, little tags um, and then also it's a cheaper solution than buying a container to organize them all in. Again, hopefully you marked which one was the top on yours because it's really easy to put this either direction here but it only goes one way and then don't forget the feet here or the bottom of the front spar.
So, as part of step three, you have to put one of these outboard ribs on each side. Unfortunately, I didn't think the step was coming up that soon, so I haven't primed them yet. So, first I need to see if my garage is even warm enough to paint. It's quite cold out here despite me wearing a t-shirt. And then uh, take some time and do that so I can get those on there. Uh, part of step three is riveting these ribs in place. So I probably can rivet these ones already pre-cut in place while I wait for the primer to dry on those two ribs. It shouldn't have any impact. Uh, just remember, as it says in the note, don't do the two inboard ones. They have nose ribs that attach through those holes as well. And if you rivet them now, you'll be drilling all the rivets out so you can attach the ribs later. We're a bit on the cool side, hovering at about 49. The temps on the can say 50. I think just to be on the safe side, I'm going to turn on a propane heater for a little bit while I start riveting these ribs on. And hopefully that will give me the temp I need to do the painting. Okay, I got my little buddy Mr. Heater running. That should uh, at least have enough to bump us up above 50. And then uh, when I do the painting, I'm turning that off because technically it is an open flame source. And it'd uh, be really bad to be painting in here with all the uh, fumes from the primer and have that going as well. Or at least I'm pretty sure something bad would happen. So while I'm waiting for that to heat up the space, which it can ha definitely handle, it's the bigger Mr. Buddy, uh, I'm going to rivet carefully into place the six ribs that I have available. And I say carefully because there's two different rivet sizes being used, so I'm going to make sure to get those correct. And on this, I really want the factory head to be on the inside here and the shop head to be on the outside here. So I think it's back to the double offset and I'm going to have to make sure to crank the air compressor back up just a little bit. Because uh, it doesn't quite drive the rivets as fast as I would like. It's already up to 52 in here, a little bit longer and it'll probably be good to shut off and paint real quick. And then uh, turn it back on and keep the heat up so that it dries properly.
So basically, I took the skins out of the cradles there so I could get down to this very last rivet on the nose ribs. Same way I had to take it out for drilling it. The other option would be to move the cradles over and somehow clamp them down so that they're hanging halfway off the table so that I can get underneath the nose of the horizontal stabilizer skin to rivet it. Okay, so a second ago I had the nose facing towards me and I was riveting with the rivet gun over here and then reaching inside for this nose rivet. Uh, that's difficult even for me with my long arms. And it's a lot easier if you reach with the rivet gun and then have the opening towards you. way the rivet gun reach isn't as far it seems and then the bucking bar is just right in this opening you can kind of get in closer to it if you don't have long arms now that those are installed I can put it back in the cradle and continue on, but first I'm going to do the left hand portion of the horizontal stabilizer since I put only one half of it at a time initially here. That's when I'll put the both halves together.
Okay, so my riveting saying is put the factory head on the thin side and the shop head on the thick side. This end rib here is one area I'm going to break that rule because to go from the thin side to the thick side, you'd have to put the rivet gun down in this area here where the nose rib is. And even with the double offset, you would have to come in at an angle. Uh, it's so far back in there. So, it's just easier to put the shop head on top. Um, I'm not even sure if there's a way to get in there. I guess if I use the squeezer, I could do it. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the squeezer. Perfect. So on these uh, four dash fours in the tip uh, spar uh, nose spars to go from the thin material to the thick, you just use a squeezer. Sometimes the answer is right there. You just gotta look at it from a different angle. And my squeezer is kind of. Uh, too short for the arms so that was one reason I've been pretty much bucking every rivet and I kind of forgot about the squeezer Okay, the last part of the step is riveting in inboard nose ribs. And there is a part of the instruction that says if it's hard to access them, you can leave them till the very end. So I'm going to skip that for now and come back to it because it's just with it in the cradles here uh, over the table. Even though I have a gap here, it's just too difficult to mess with and it would be better to have it laying flat on the table facing me so I can easily get to it. So we'll just skip that for now. The next step is to rivet in the remaining spars. And I still haven't painted or primed the last four spars. So I need to do that before moving on. So what I'm doing here is I was having trouble getting the riveter in up against this rib. So I have the top half of the rib uncleecoed so I can bend it out of the way. But the bottom is securely clecoed to both the spar and the skin. 
And part of that is to make sure that this rivet, the pop rivet, is able to remain flush during riveting. So starting ATAC 13, step two, what you might have seen me doing there is putting a mark on the skin. We're riveting the uh, forward flange now, and halfway down where you have the reinforcing doubler in there, the uh, size of rivet changes. So I was just marking a mark here and putting three point or three TAC four rivets this way. 3-tack 4.5 rivets this way, just as a reminder to stop putting in the 3-4 rivets. And then where the 3-tack 4.5 rivets are, every time there's a rib, it steps up. To a 3-5 rivet. And once I get to that point, I'll just rivet those ribs portions first. That way, later when I'm going along putting in the 4.5s, I know not to put a rivet at each rib lo location because I'll already have them riveted. But this is the portion that I think will take the rest of the day and probably some time into the next video on the next day.
Okay, that's going to do it for tonight and this video. And I didn't finish riveting all the front spar web to the skin as I predicted. Pretty close though. I only have about two rib sections here and then all the 3-4 rivets on the other side. And then I'll be done with step two on 8-tack 13 and ready to move on to step three, which will be riveting in the uh, inboard ribs up to the stringer. <clears throat> uh, I think I counted the spar rivets earlier and it's something like 240 of these. And so I have probably a little over 300 of them done in just under four hours. If I had a little bit more time, maybe another hour, I would have been able to finish it up. But it's kind of late and I need to let the kids sleep. And I need to get to sleep too probably and go to work tomorrow. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Uh, think about subscribing if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.